So we're down here on the floor with a piece of paper because a lot of people have been asking me to make some videos about songwriting and songwriting techniques. And there's a lot of techniques that I want to talk about, but the first one that I'm going to talk about today is called rhyme. Now there's a very basic type of rhyme that we're all familiar with called a perfect rhyme. That's just basically when the words exactly rhyme. They come in two breeds, masculine, like pick and trick, and feminine, where it's the second to the last syllable that actually rhymes, like picky and tricky. Other than that, any rhyme that's not perfect goes into the other category, which we call family rhymes. Sometimes we hear them referred to as general rhymes or near rhymes. The family rhymes can get a bit confusing because they come in a bunch of flavors such as assonance, consonance, syllabic, imperfect, semi-rhyme, oblique rhyme, half rhyme, and there's even something called an I rhyme. But you don't have to worry about those because I want to talk about something a lot more basic. But if you are interested in all these other types of rhymes, I'll make sure to put up a link to the Wikipedia page about rhyming, which is a great place to start. But I want to talk about Rhyme Scheme. Rhyme Scheme talks about the rhythm of the rhyme. Now let's take a child's nursery rhyme. Miss Mary Mack, all dressed in black, with silver buttons all down her back. Now since Mac and black rhyme, we'll put them in a group called A. Buttons doesn't really rhyme with anything, so we're going to give it an X. And back goes with the first group, so we're going to also give it an A. So you might say that the rhyme scheme for Miss Mary Mac is A-A-X-A. -A -A. Pop music is really great for studying rhyme schemes. Let's look at the Backstreet Boys, for example. Fire and Desire rhyme, so they get group A. Now we have a new set of rhymes with Say and Way, so we're going to give them group B. Because we finished one set of rhymes before moving on to the next one, this rhyme scheme is known as rhymed couplets. Now, rhymed couplets are really, really common in pop music, but there's another style of rhyme scheme that's also pretty common in pop music. So let's look at the Spice Girls now. I know, they're your favorite. Here, smile and mile, lines one and three rhyme with each other, so they're group A. Lines two and four also rhyme, me and me. Now that's group B, we call that an identity rhyme, when you rhyme a word with itself. This rhyme scheme is called through written. Now I'm sure you're probably wondering by this point, how does this apply to songwriting? Well, let's look at Every Breath You Take by The Police. After a long series of A lines, they end on a physically shorter X line that doesn't rhyme with anything in the song and really stands out. Now this is a well-documented songwriting technique to make the listener feel a little bit uncomfortable or off-kilter. A lot of people think this is a love song. It's actually not. It's actually a stalker song. And they end the phrase on a six minor chord to make sure you know that. Okay, so you made it through the boring stuff, now here's the fun stuff. These are rap lyrics released by rap group Run DMC in 1986. Now, you'll notice that we're always talking about the words at the end of the line that rhyme, and this is called an end rhyme. And this is basically how very early rap worked, way up until the mid-90s. So let's skip ahead. Here's another Run DMC song from 1993. Now you'll see that the end rhymes are, in fact, still in place. But before we were using perfect rhymes at the end of the lines, and now we're using family rhymes, raps and hats. It's close, but it's not perfect. But now they're starting to add another element to their rhyming. In addition to the end rhyme, they're repeating vowel sounds from within the line itself. Jeans and Adidas both have a long E. Same with tough and rough. Now, believe it or not, this rhyming inside the line is called internal rhyming. So this internal rhyme technique is really what's pushing rap in a new direction nowadays. You may have heard people say that it doesn't take talent to write rap music, and I'm going to go ahead and blow that out of the water right now. I'm going to look at one of the most efficient uses of internal rhyme in rap history, the first verse of Lose Yourself by Eminem. Now you might want to take a minute and go listen to the song and then come back to this video. What I'm going to do is every time I hear a word that has the same vowel sound as another word, I'm going to put them in a column. We're going to make what we call rhyme columns. So the first line of the song is, his palms are sweaty, knees weak. We now have three vowel sounds to work with right off the bat. Knees and weak both share the long E sound, so they're going to share a column. Palms and arms are a near rhyme, as are sweaty and heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already, mom spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready. And then from here, it's just rapid fire to drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud, he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how everybody's joking now. The clocks run up, time's up, over, blow. Now Eminem pulls somewhat of a fast one on you here. He just said the word blow, which I don't think is a word, but it doesn't really seem that wrong because it's preceded with all the vowel sounds that sound exactly like it. Then for the rest of the verse, he just picks two vowel sounds and alternates between them. So he takes the line, snap back to reality, and he takes those sounds, and those become kind of the structure for the rest of the verse. Snap back to reality, oh, there goes gravity, oh, there goes rabbit, he choked, he's so mad but he. Now when you use a combination of words, mad but he, to rhyme with a single word like gravity, that's called a mosaic rhyme. Won't give up that easy, no, he won't have it. He knows his whole backs to these ropes, it don't matter, he's dope, he knows that, but he's broke, he's so standing, he knows, and so on and so forth. So if you go back to the first page of rhyme columns that we did, you'll notice there's almost no words in this entire song that don't rhyme with anything else. Now that's a far cry from the early days of Run DMC when you were only rhyming the ends of the lines. He rhymes almost every single word in the song. So now I'll show you an example of how I use that technique in one of my own songs, Caroline. I'm going to look at the pre-chorus, which goes, It's a shame that nobody knows this thing that we got, but we'll be the same way no matter if they know it or not. So I'm working with a long O sound. Nobody, no, no, no. 
and a long A sound. Shame, same, way, they. In addition to all this, I have my standard end rhyme, ga and not. So I could have just gone for the AA theme and left it like that, but because of all the internal rhyme, it makes it sound much better to your ears than just end rhyme. It makes those lines sound a lot more closely related. It worked wonders for me in Hey Molly. The end of the first verse was originally, when you came out of math class, here's something I wanted to ask you. Now that's okay, you've got class and ask family rhyme at the end. But with a little more work, you can change it to, when you were leaving math class, here's what I've been meaning to ask you. So now you have class and ask and leaving and meaning, and I think the line works a lot better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want, I can do more in the future. If not, that's okay too. Uh, feel free to leave a comment here or tweet me on Twitter at Mike Lombardo. As always, I love you very much, and I'll talk to you soon.